Finally today, we have a story that's not quite about farming or ranching, but it's one that we just couldn't resist. Back here in North Dakota, a not-so-ordinary restaurant feeds a tiny town and its few passers-by every day. As you'll see, the steaks are spectacular. But sometimes, George's and the Owl serves up something a bit supernatural. Set in cattle country, Amadon is small, even by small-town standards. School, shop, post office, and church are all within shouting distance. So is this town's only restaurant. Altogether, Amadon has fewer than 30 full-time residents. Living residents, that is. A lot of times you see something from the corner of your eye and you think, oh, what's that? Marie Lorge and her husband run this popular watering hole. Patrons can wash down a three-pound prime rib with their favorite brew. But Marie says they sometimes get more spirits than they bargained for. We've actually seen these things here, and, and it's something that I have a problem believing, even believing my own eyes. These things are ghosts, pure and simple. Enough people have seen them to earn George's and the Owl a place in those books and websites listing haunted hotspots. You have no explanation for something like that. Absolutely none, but it, it changes your, your concept of things, I think, a little bit when you really and truly do see something like that. She says the paranormal encounters began when a group of people eating in an upstairs dining room remarked on what looked like an old photograph of three people. Problem was, it was no photograph. They asked my waitress if the people in the mirror were local people. And my waitress looked and sure enough there were three faces in the mirror and she came downstairs and her eyes were big and she said, Marie, there are people in the mirror. And I said, what? What people? In what mirror? What are you talking about? She said, you have to come and look. So I walked upstairs, and sure enough, there were faces in the mirror, very plain, very distinct. And the, they asked me again, the people eating said, who are those, are those old Amadon residents? And I said, you know, I, I'm not sure who they are. <laughs> they were there for, oh, probably 30, 40 minutes before they started to fade away. Since that first encounter, several other out-of-town visitors have let their presence be known as well. It's a little boy here. His parents owned the filling station here. And he was, he was run over out in front of the filling station chasing his ball. And we see him here in the restaurant. He's always chasing something. He's always running and laughing and happy. Not all of the uninvited guests creep through Marie's restaurant on two legs. A lot of people saw the dog. It was a big black dog, and he would go from table to table and kind of beg for food. And, and when they would turn to give him a bite, he would be gone. And I actually had a lady walk back into my kitchen with a piece of steak, and she said, I want you to give this to this fat dog. He was at our table begging, and I said, OK, I will. <laughs> what do you say at that point, you know? Marie adds that things don't necessarily calm down after hours. To hear voices, my truck drivers that deliver my food have heard those. Sometimes when they're in here alone, they think there's someone upstairs walking and talking. But you can't really make out the words. It sounds like a conversation between two or three people, and you just hear it, and you strain to make out the words. Marie says she's never been spooked by any of her eerie visitors. That would go against the local ways. It never was creepy. Never did feel frightening or, or threatening or anything. They're North Dakota ghosts. <laughs> They're happy. <laughs> and that's our show for today from the beautiful and uncrowded state of North Dakota. We thank you for watching. I'm Paul Ryan, and we want to see you next time right here in America's Heartland.